ladies and gentlemen, I am Scott and welcome back to Three Musketeer Gamers. This is Memory Lane Video Games, a series where I'll discuss games from the older generations that I used to play and were top games in their time, yet these days with current consoles, they're rarely heard of. So I thought a great start to this series would be a game that looks like it's been inspired by old London gang films. If you don't recognise this game, well, you're too young. This is The Getaway, a PlayStation 2 exclusive title developed by Team Soho and published by Sony Computer Entertainment. This game and also its sequel, The Getaway Black Monday, consists of two protagonists whose stories are played one after the other but both running along the same timeline. Often the two characters, one a cop and one a crook, will occasionally cross paths with each other until finally they properly meet ready for the game's finale. So the story of The Getaway revolves around its two main protagonists, Mark Hammond and DC Frank Carter, and its one main antagonist, Charlie Jolson. Charlie orders for Mark's wife Susie and child Alex to be abducted from outside their home and brought him so he can get Mark under his control. During the events, however, Susie is accidentally shot and killed, which Mark hears the gunshots and runs out to them. He holds his wife as she dies, but he also picks up the murder weapon that's been left there, putting his fingerprints on it, and as someone comes around the corner as well. So Mark chases after Alex in his car, but when he gets to the warehouse where they are, he's captured and Charlie forces him to do his dirty work, including burning a restaurant that's run by his old gang, inciting a gang war between the Yardies and the Triads, and also hitting a police station to kill a police chief who Charlie's been paying off. And all of this... Mark's also got the police after him because they believe he killed Susie because of the fingerprints and the witness. And while all this is going on, DC Frank Carter has his own stuff to do, including arresting Charlie's nephew Jake, who's later broken out by Mark because of Charlie. Both protagonists' paths cross several times, and they end up working together near the end to take Charlie down. Because it all culminates on the Solvita, a docked cargo ship where Charlie plans to show all the other gang leaders why he should have been taken seriously. So, if we're going to talk about characters in this game, you've got Mark Hammond, who is an ex-member of the Collins crew gang and has recently been released from prison. As I stated before, his wife's killed and his son's kidnapped and he's forced to do whatever he can to save his son by working for Charlie Jolson. Then you've also got DC Frank Carr. He wants to destroy the Bethnal Green mob and Jolson along with it. He spends his career in the Flying Squad in order to do so. However, with his boss being under Charlie's pay, He's actually framed and thrown out the police before he can do anything. His boss is then killed on Jolson's orders by Mark Hammond and therefore the only way he has of clearing his name is actually by bringing Jolson to justice which is why he ends up working with Mark. Then finally for the main characters you have actually also got Charlie Jolson himself. He's the aging leader of the Bethnal Green mob and he feels that the other gang leaders have no respect for him anymore and he's no longer given the respect that he deserves. He uses Mark Hammond in a plan to bring all the other gangs to their knees and he plans to show them why he's not quite ready to retire just yet. And then you also have Jake Jolson, someone who's not quite up there as a main character, but whereas with Mark you'll mainly be dealing with Charlie, Frank Carter mainly deals with Jake. From his first mission where he actually arrests Jake and his partner gets killed, all the way through to his second to last in a final showdown. So Jake is Charlie's nephew and he takes after his uncle as well. Almost as crazy. As I just stated, he kills Frank's partner, but he's also the one who sends Mark Hammond into the middle of the war zone between the Yardies and the Triads. There are loads of other great characters that I could talk about here as well, but I could be here for hours talking about the characters. You've got Eyebrows, Grievous, Sparky and Harry, all henchmen for Charlie and all working under his orders. You've also got Yasmin, a character who starts out as an assassin for Charlie but eventually ends up working with Mark after Charlie sends Mark to kill her but Mark doesn't do it. You've got McCormack, the police chief at Sunhill Police Station, who actually is working under Charlie, he's under Charlie's pay bracket but then he turns against Charlie and arrests Yasmin so Charlie has him killed. But then you've also got the gang leaders as well. You've got Nick Collins, head of the Collins gang, Jamal, head of the Yardies, and Shan Chu Lee, head of the London Triads. The characters in this game are just great. There's so much diversity. And it's fantastic to see that in a game that was brought out years ago. 
And talking of years ago, if you look back at the game now, its graphics seem pretty poor. However, thinking about when this game was released back in 2002, the game was state of the art. Quite bigger than anything really attempted for these types of video games. A huge in detail sandbox London to explore, and characters that they actually used motion capture for. Not to mention, I think this game has some of the best looking fire and smoke graphics from a lot of PS2 games. When it was brought out, and even to this day, this game is stated to be a GTA clone. But for the getaway, it's something that I completely disagree with. Why is it a clone, in terms of the gangs and a story about gangs? This game's so much more than that and it's only referred to as a clone because it was brought out during the time that GTA made its crossover to the 3D third person games that we know today. This game is so different to GTA, firstly in the fact that it's a mission based game. GTA is completely open city with mission markers where you go to to get missions underway. The getaway has a free roam mode that gives you the chance to explore its city in its fullest but its story is completely played out in 24 missions. Secondly, you have two playable characters whose stories run parallel from start to finish and occasionally cross over. GTA didn't do that until arguably 2009 when it brought out its GTA 4 expansion, The Lost and the Damned, which ran parallel to GTA 4. Then there's its health recovery mechanics, which has you stop your character next to a wall, they'll then lean against that wall to recover health and you'll see the blood stains on their clothes begin to disappear and to add to that no health bars the cars had indicators that activated during missions to tell you when to turn not to mention that a proper in detail GTA gang story wasn't implemented into its 3D games until San Andreas two years after this game had been released to me, GTA 3 had been about getting revenge after being led for dead and building your way through a criminal empire, and GTA Vice City had been about building a criminal empire yourself. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, despite its comparisons to GTA, this is a game in its own right. A game that I love playing in my PS2 days, even if I was younger then, and even now, it still for me stands out as well as Black Monday, its sequel. It's a game definitely worth a play. But anyway guys, if you've enjoyed this overview video then please leave it a like. As always, all of our social media links are in the description box down below. Follow them to be updated about any new videos or live streams and for the streams our Twitch is also there as well. Also let me know if there's any games that you guys would like to see videos of. Put them down in the comments for us but until next time people, bye bye.